up what you're going to do. You're going to look at your data, and you're going to look at the rate of change for these different periods of time. For number one, then you're going to make observations based on your calculations. Use your graph and a visual to support your statements, and then look at um, if we extend ten more years. So with your partner, you're going to roll through one for one through four. I'm going to keep this view up for you in case it's easier for you. Um, either way. And then uh, I'm, I'm looking at about 10 minutes to do this. I would like to keep this view up, so I'm going to be asking people for, like, the questions or the intervals. Okay, I don't have them all memorized. So I think the first interval was 1987 to 1990. Is that true? Yeah. Okay. So to figure that out, I like to, like, I kind of did something like this just to bring my attention to it. And I said to figure out how much it changed, 84 minus 17. And I've got 90 minus 87 to see how many years that happened for, okay? So then you can calculate it up from there. 84 minus 17 means over that time, the number of stores increased 67. I'm going to divide that by the three years that that increase happened. And I get 22 and one-third stores per year. Well, it's an average, right? So an average, we can't have a partial store. But if it said, like, how many stores the next year, we would then interpret our remainder. So I'm going to go, this is going to answer number two, actually. If I look at that stretch of time and I make this line, does that line represent the data pretty well or no? I think it does a pretty good job. The next interval was for six years, is that right? 87 to 93, so I'm looking there. So, it changed 272 minus 17 over that six-year interval, right? So, 272 minus 17 means it changed by 255 stores over six years, or 42.5 stores per year. So, what happened to my average rate of change? It grew, which means it really had to, like my new data had to be pretty high to bring my average up, right? Because it like the average double. All those small years are still in my data, but the average double. So let's take a look what this looks like. From here, three more years. How does that, how does that number describe the data? A CSC? So-so? So it's okay, right? I'd say okay. It's all right. Let's look for the full 10 years. All right. To find out how much to change by, I'm going to subtract 17 from the 1412. And that's for 10 years. So 1412 minus 17 gives me 1,395 stores. So that's 139.5 stores per year average. So let's take a look what that line looks like. Is that a good representation of the data? No, it, it explains like none of what's happening. And, but is it, a valid, is it a valid math answer? It is. So this is where we need to like understand situations, understand like someone can do good math and give us this misleading answer, right? Because where, where was like, how would you describe the area of the situation where the average rate of change was a better fit? Yeah, near the beginning. Why? Because the growth hasn't taken off exponentially yet. All right, also, would you, how would you describe the length of the interval? Shorter times or longer times of intervals? What do you guys think? Shorter intervals or longer intervals for the average rate of change to work? The shorter, right, because it's not... Not as much stuff. Like if I went one day to the next, or one year to the next, that wouldn't be too bad, would it? Right there, that wouldn't be too bad. So we're going to be looking for, to be good measure, shorter intervals toward the beginning of this growth one. Uh, what was the next question? It gave us like the next 10 years or something? Um, make some observation about the rate of change in capitalism. We did that with uh, this. And then... The last one was uh, F of 20. Minus what did it tell you? How many stores for F of 20? Oh, 15,011. 15, and I'm going to take away my 97 
fourteen twelve, and that was over the next ten years, right? So fifteen thousand minus fourteen twelve. So that means they built thirteen thousand five hundred ninety nine stores in the next ten years, which gives a ten year average of one thousand three hundred fifty nine point nine stores per year. What happened to our average going ten more years? The average went up again. We know this is going to happen because as we get further and further, if the same trend happens, what happens with an exponential function? The, the rate of change would increase, right? Because it's growing and growing exponentially. We've seen lots of exponential functions. Cool. Now you might be wondering, what happens if we have exponential decay? Well, well we're going to look at it. Right here. No, now we're talking about solar cells again. Claire, Claire's giving hot takes, okay? Claire's saying first five years it was $12 a year. Second five years it was only $2 a year. So you're going to find out, is Claire right? And then if she is, what's going to happen after that time period? So let's talk about these solar cells. So let's check out 77 to 82. And I think it's, I like to like mark where I'm looking at, 70, 77, 78, 79, 80, 81, 82. So here to here. And it's going down to about 20. So I want to do 20 minus 80 over five years, right? <clears throat> so that's a negative 60 fifths or about negative 12 per year. So I'd say clear. And, and this is a key word, about, right? So if you pull a different value, it's still going to be about. Yeah. Okay. I said 80 minus 20 over 0 minus 5. Yeah, just usually we do second thing minus first thing to find the difference of things. Okay. And it comes, that's also why the slope, I know this isn't slope, but slope is a rate of change. Also why second point minus first is a thing for the slope equation. Same idea. Uh, then let's... So Claire, check, check on the $12. Let's look at 83 to 88. So 83 is right there. 4, 5, 6, 7, 83 to 88 is right there. Okay. Second five years. Is the second five years 83 to 88, though? Anyway, 15 is what happened, and it went all the way down to 5 over the next five years. Negative 10 fifths is negative $2 per year. So Claire's not lying. Claire's correct. Good for you, Claire. Claire's also the name of the woman that owned the store where I got my ears pierced in college, in case you all wonder. To make my mom mad. It worked also. Shouldn't have done it. Should have just been nice to my mom. So, lastly, if this trend continues, what's going to happen to my average price? What's going to happen? It's going to keep decreasing, right? But as significant, no. decrease, but not by as much, right? There's not much. Whoa, I spelled much weird. Mulch. Um, after we get all the way down to $2, there's not like a room for a lot of change, right? Because the lowest it could go is like theoretically close to zero, right? So it's going to really kind of like, if we assigned a pace to it, slow down. Now, looking at this one, let's, let's see if those same things hold true. Uh, are shorter intervals better or longer? longer? To be close to the situation, longer intervals are working better? Shorter. Look it. Those are both five years. But if I went like between two or three years, would it be even closer? Yeah. yeah, the shorter the interval, the closer. And then when we had exponential growth, which looked like this, we were better on the earlier end. We're closer now when we have exponential decay. Are we better on the earlier or later end? The later end, right, over here. And that just makes sense with what we know how the functions work. It approaches zero and kind of flattens out or approaches infinity and flattens out the other way. So rate of change, average rate of change, if there's good math. There, you can calculate a number, good math. Now, whether it represents the situation well or not depends on those, the interval and where. Okay. 
Okay? That's the big idea. See? Those are the big ideas. Again, the average rate of change, we don't call it slope in this case because slope only applies to what? Linear. I heard it back to linear, right? These, these aren't linear, so we can find an average rate of change, and that's going to be a good indicator sometimes and not others. It's, us, it's for us to know. We pointed out several times this year, right? Good math can be misleading. So we, we don't get misled by good math that's intended to be misleading by understanding the, how, the numbers, how we come up with numbers. All right? All right, we're going to go back to our science seats. I'll hand out some homework.